and he's still my heart. It's still here. I thought January 3rd was the final day and I was expecting signs on the gate and, and it's still here and people are still doing stuff. This is such a great space. It's just perfect. I'm gonna put our first plant label in the ground. Okay, this, um, is, this is Ryan. I'm Ryan. I'm here at the Ecology Center. I've studied permaculture for a few years, so I'm offering that as a resource for people to come in and ask questions, and I'll help guide you through the space and give you advice if I can about your own gardens at home and things like that. Yeah, and, um, and giving away um, uh, plant starts to people in the neighborhood yeah, so we can all start gardens. Totally. We're starting seeds in the greenhouse, um, perennial edibles, um, also other edible and medicinal plants, and then we'll be giving those plants away so people can garden throughout the city, grow food and medicine locally. Okay. Uh, so I'm putting our first plant label in the ground. It's the black seed runner bean. Um, we're going to label the plants so that people can walk in and they can look around and they can start to learn to identify plants for themselves. It's like an educational tool. Um, so I'm starting with this bed because this bed has a lot of perennials in it. It's a very permaculture oriented bed. It was planted by um, someone from the Haight-Ashbury neighborhood who's a permaculturist and had a garden bed here until the eviction. He removed a plant or two that he really loved, but he's leaving most of the plants. And um, so I'm going to start labeling them. This one's a black seed runner bean. Um, so this is a perennial bean, and it produces an edible bean that can be eaten. Um, so that is right there. And maybe next time that it goes to seed, we'll have a bunch of black seed runner bean seeds to give away to people. So This plant here. Um, is an Italian kale called Spigarello. It's a specialty kale. Um, so that's this guy right here with a little broccoli-like bud in the center. And then this plant here is called Echium matarensis. It's a pollinator attractor, so the bees love this. This grows some really beautiful flowers. The bees love it and attracts lots of pollinators, which are really helpful for all the plants in the garden. So that benefits all the plants by attracting bees to this garden bed. And, and um, you know, I think this is a tremendous benefit because, honestly, Ryan, I walk through the Presidio in San Francisco a lot, and this summer I found dead bees everywhere. Really? Yeah. There's and it been was a lot of um, vandalism of beehives around the city. There well, they're beehives. saying it has something to do with um, global warming. Well, there's, and, there's more than global warming happening as far as the bee die-off is concerned. There's a massive bee die-off happening because of what Monsanto's practices are. Yes. Um, other large corporate agriculture practices are leading to this large bee die-off, which is really unfortunate because without bees, we won't survive very long. Because That's bees right. are what pollinate most of the edible plants that we eat. Mm -hmm. um, there's also been some vandalism of some of the beehives at Hayes Valley Farm and Alamany Farms, which are two urban agriculture, permaculture farms and gardens in San Francisco. Um, so there's the creation of a new bee farm in San Francisco happening now, which is really wonderful. Really? Where? Um, I'm not sure. I can't tell you the address. I don't know it off the top of my head. But um, well, folks, you can it's find out, out soon. We can we'll put it, it on our website, humanbn.org. We'll get an urban agriculture resource guide on there very soon. Let so, me ask you, why would people vandalize beehives? Um, the thoughts that I've heard around the issue are that people don't like bees because they sting them and they don't understand that they're pollinators and that they're what creates our food by connecting flowers. Um, so maybe that's why, but we really can't tell for sure. Hey, I've lived around bees all my life, and if you don't aggress against bees, bees do not bother you. The, the really aggressive ones are wasps, not bees. Right. So everybody within sound of this video, take note of that. If you leave bees alone, bees will leave you alone. This is Artemisia over here. Artemisia? Um, yeah, this is a California native plant. Um, it came from Greg Gar's native plant nursery collection. And so that's this guy right here, the Artemisia. Okay. And I have one more plant to label, which is this one with the purple flowers here. Amber Lauren Hill. Take note of this plant because it sounds an awful lot like Artemis. Word. So this is Lupinus pilularis. There's hold one on. here hold with on, the hold purple on. flowers. Hold on, I'm not there yet. I see them. Lupinus pilularis. This one has these purple flowers. There's one over there without purple flowers. 
Where um, are we? Show me again. So you look at the leaf, see the leaf shape? There's one with the same leaf shape right down there. Uh, here, okay, right here on the, on the one with the stalk that's coming up with nothing on top, right. that one. Okay. So, so yeah, I don't know the function of this plant yet, but I'm going to learn it soon. I have a feeling it's a good pollinator attractor because of its flowers, but I don't know beyond that. It seems like it has these fuzzy little pods right here, which could hold an edible seed or maybe just a regular seed. So. I don't know, but I'm gonna label it and then we can all do the research together and figure right. it out. I'll so that's help. our first bed and basically what happened here is these little beds all used to have um, wooden boxes around them. Mm -hmm. And so we took the wooden boxes away, the walls. Um, so permaculture teaches that the roots of plants like to communicate underground. Um, they communicate through their roots, through the soil with microorganisms and also through mycelial networks, which are mushroom networks. Mycelium is almost like the root of a mushroom fruit. It's what's underground before the mushroom fruit bodies. And mycelial networks have been called by some the internet of the soil because they connect plants and they connect the soil all around. And so an example of what happens is let's say you have a pea or a bean plant in here, which is a nitrogen fixer, which means it takes nitrogen out of the air through its leaves and it puts nitrogen into the soil and makes it available for other plants. And then over here you have a dynamic accumulating plant, which is a plant that has an especially deep tap root and that taproot allows for nutrients to be brought up through the soil and makes it available for roots that are shallower than the deep taproot. Uh, what's so, the name of that plant? Well, there's are many you... plants that are dynamic accumulators, such but as you're... Jerusalem artichoke, um, comfrey, things like this. What's but... that one? Do you know yet? Have you identified that no, one No, no, I'm not sure. Right How now. do you know it's one of so, those types? I'm not saying that's one. Oh, Excuse are you just me pointing the video. to a plant? I'm not saying this is a dynamic... There's no dynamic accumulator that I know of here, and there's no okay. bean or pea in here. Okay. Actually, there is the black the runner bean, but that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying, for an example, if there is a, a bean or pea plant, which is a nitrogen fixer in one bed, and there is a dynamic accumulator in another bed, if they're walled away from each other, then this one can't provide the nitrogen for that one, and this one can't provide the really deep nutrients for this one. But if we take the walls away and connect the soil, then this one can provide nitrogen for this plant, and this one can provide the deep nutrients for this, and that's how plants work together. So Beautiful. another example of that is Three Sisters, which yeah, is corn, beans, Yeah, you talked about that the other day. So yes. corn go, grows up through the center. This is what indigenous people in the Americas used to grow. Um, so corn grows up through the center, and that provides a pole for the beans to grow around. And the beans fix nitrogen out of the air and put it in the soil, and makes that available for the corn, and also makes it available for, for the squash. And then the squash, since it has such large leaves and such large fruit, it acts as like a mulch. It, it shades the soil to keep water in the soil. And so each plant is doing something for each other. It's a symbiosis, a mutual aid relationship, which is also what we have going on here with humans, is that everyone here is here voluntarily. No one's being paid. No one has any more power than anyone else. And we're operating through mutual aid. So I might bring food one day, and someone else might wash the ground, and someone else might bring soil and someone else might build a greenhouse and through each of us volunteering to do what we love and are passionate about and want to give to each other, we all get help through a system of mutual aid and symbiosis. So. Something to learn from plants. Totally. Yep, Thank you. and it's true throughout nature. Don't go away yet, another question. I'll make it quick and put it on another clip. Um, it's true throughout nature. It's, as a matter of fact, it flies in the face of the total individualism thing and that's part of the American ethos. It doesn't work. You look up in the sky and birds are all flying together in flight. It's There's terrible. no life form that doesn't depend on each other and cooperate together. And that's human beings too, unless we lose that ability. Which we and, have. And what you're saying, you believe that. We have. I think that we have. I think that I was making the comparison. Some people were upset about the garden bed walls coming down. I said that the same way that our walls of our apartments and our houses separate us from communicating and sharing with each other as much as we could, the same thing is happening with these garden beds, and so we can learn a lot from plants. And if we can learn to be in those symbiotic mutual aid relationships, those relationships that don't have anything to do with dominance or submission, um, then we can have a healthier social atmosphere as well as a healthier ecology. And that's, what, that's the beauty of this ecology center. That's what's going on here. This is a, a, an object lesson in that. In, in people and yeah. all life forms. Okay, I'm going to um, tell you that I watched you when I videoed the garden the other day. Right. Somebody told me, I asked who was working in here, 
um, why they took out these partitions and they explained it the sa they said the same thing to me that you just said cool. which means somebody is listening and we're all learning from each other yes totally